Hi, welcome to the channel. Today we have cache with time limit as our next lead code question. This is an interesting problem as it will tell you how you can write some self-destruct code. That is, you there will be cases where you do not want your data to be accessed after a certain period of time. For example, you are designing a cache system that your cache or your data you are in your memory, a key value or some sort of data will be totally accessible for initial 10 seconds. After that, if the user is trying to get that value, it should not return anything to the user. Or same something like with your user management system, you are designing a user management system that the user should be accessible a particular set of information just for 10 seconds or for 10 minutes right in those cases also you want to your logic to be something written like this right let's first try to understand what the question is asking us to do we have to write a class that allow getting and setting key value pairs however a time and uh, time until expiration is associated with each key that is we will be getting a key value and a timer in uh, timer in form of our question arguments that is a particular key will be totally inaccessible after this particular time right so as mentioned here we will be having uh, we will have to define three methods set get and count set will be having key value and duration so each key can be have can have a different duration of existence right that the first it could be totally possible that the first key is valid for entire one minute but the uh, next key is just possible for 10 seconds so we have to define some sort of logic like that so we have to accept an integer key and an integer value where the duration will be in millisecond that once the duration has elapsed or the duration is complete the key should be inaccessible that the key that our store should not have that key if the user is trying to access it again it should return it should return false so initially if the key is there it is not expired we have to return true but if the key is expired we have to return false there will be another catch if you are calling uh, i'll help you explain with example yeah so here is the example so it is saying that initially if it's just posting anything uh, with key value and time you have to store in your database but if you are if you're doing it again with the same key value and another duration you have to override that duration so we already had 1 comma 42 for line number 26 but if the user is doing it again on line number 27 we have to change that uh, timer right that is the key value will be now accessible for initial 3000 second i hope this is clear uh, before jumping to the solution let's go and understand few of the javascript concepts which we will be using in this particular example and we can come back to the solution later set timeout is a browser api in which browser will make sure to call execute this callback after the time is elapsed right so you will notice that after 500 millisecond browser is making a call to this particular callback and we are seeing console log here set timeout returns a timer value uh, it's a unique id of this any set timeout which you are defining in your code you can use this timer to stop the execution of the set timeout value or you can just remove that from from the set timeout itself right that is if we are doing clear timeout of this timer there will be no callback executed if the time has not elapsed yet so even if in the case you are just doing this we are not going to see any timeout value here it's a unique key every time you are executing the set timeout you will see that we are getting a unique key here right and here it was 203 and now it's 100 uh, it's just 19. i hope this is clear to execute to you to solve this particular problem we are going to define a data structure which is going to be a map in our case it can be object as well but map provides us few uh, methods out of the box get and set which makes it easier for us to work with um, data structures right so we will be having three values key value and the timer here so in this particular logic what we will do we will try start putting anything we are getting from the user into our map data structure but we will start a timer as well and store the timers identity something like what we were doing here into our map data structure so this will be key of uh, data we are getting this is the value and this is the timer value that means if we want to stop the timer we will be using this key here itself right so you can use this as 19 because something was there in the example this could be 203 this could be any random value right so this is the key this is the value and this is the timer value right if you want to stop the timer we can use this otherwise after 19 milliseconds this key value will be disappearing from our code base itself from our sorry from our uh, data structure itself we will be writing some sort of logic right so to understand maps i will help you with an example how we are planning to do that how we are going to use maps here so you can define a map by using a new map this is the syntax here now we have a map inside our cache we can use it we can use it we can start setting some values here so this is the key so it is saying that for 
key of 10 you give, give, give you give it this value that means 10 will be having an array with 33 and 5000 as its parameter so when you are doing a console log 10 it will show you this this will be the value inside 10 the first uh, this is the array right the first index will be 33 and the next one will be 5000 similarly if you try to set, if you try to set these value it will be there in the map as well but now we will see that how we can access the value as i've already shown you we can use get method to get the value from the map but if we try to get some value which is not there in map it will return us undefined see 88 was not there in the map right we haven't defined it yet hence it was returning undefined you can also get the size of a map by just doing uh, the map name dot size something like what we do with array right um, array dot land so this is the same syntax cache dot size it will return the size of our cache because we have three values here it will just return us three so if i also show you how the map looks like this is how the map will look like um, it will have three key value pairs key, key will be 10 76 and 23 the values will be inside their arrays respectively right so the 76 will be having two elements in the array first one is 73 second index is 2000 i hope this is clear now let's jump to the solution as well in the solution as told you before we will be starting declaring a map i'll just remove this example it's not needed anymore so we will start by declaring a map here now as told you before we will we will check first if the map has a key map already has a key or not so this is how you can check if the key is there in the map so whatever key we are getting we will be just checking inside the map so we are using this dot cache right because we have to define it in a form of a class right a class right now coming back to the part we will check if the key is there in the map if it's there what we will do we will we will uh, as i told you before we are storing the timers right here in the second argument so what we will do we will get the timer value so this is how you got the key so whatever value we had here so we will get an array by doing dot get here and we will take the second argument of the array since we do not need the first time argument we are just leaving as uh, null we are just uh, we just what we what we want is just the second argument we will take the second argument and we will clear the timer that is we do not need the timer anymore if you remember i mentioned if you are getting two values we have to override the with the next value right earlier it was 1 comma 40 comma 42 comma 3000 as well right so that is what we are planning we know we knew that the key is already exists so we have to start the timer again so we are just stopping the earlier timer so that we can restart it this is how we will restart the timer right the, this is this is this is just saying after this time is done after the duration is done that means after 1000 second we have to remove this data from our cache so i just missed explaining you the concept here you can also do this and if you do the value again it will be undefined so let's just let let me just remove all of these so you'll notice that this was our set right this was the value which we were getting from 10 we can delete the cache value here itself whenever we are deleting it's just returning us to that the deletion was successful and if you see if you're, if i try to delete 100 it's it won't be possible because uh, 100 is not there so it will return false but yeah for time being uh, let's not go there uh, we are deleting the 10th value hence it returned true since we are able to delete delete it now if we try to access the value it's not there in the map it's so it will just return undefined as usual right so what we will do we will say the browser we will tell the browser hey hey browser that after this particular time is done whatever value we are getting we have to just delete the key from our cache here right now what we will do we will store the timer value in form of some time key and put it back into a map so that we will we will be aware of this timer value and we will simply return if the key is present or not that is what the question is expecting us to do i will explain again if the key is present in our code if the key is present in our uh, data structure map we will simply pull out the timer value and we will stop the timer so that we can restart it i hope it is clear right now we will see how what we have to do in the get function uh, it's, it's mentioned that the if the unexpired key exists we should just return the value or otherwise we should return un, uh, we should return minus one it's as simple as that if uh, we will simply check again if the key is present we can just directly do that by doing this if the key is if the key is not there we have a not operator as well if the key is not there we will simply return minus one or if the key is there we will pull out the value earlier we were doing this right so this is a syntax where we can just get the values from the array so what we will do we will just get the value from the key since we are only interested in value we do not care about the time now we will simply use value and we will simply return it 
I hope this is clear. In the third one, we need to return the count of the unexpired key. So that we have already seen, right? Uh, we can use dot uh, dot size to get the size of this particular um, particular map. So it won't work because we are doing delete. And uh, if I see now, the size is three now. So we will be simply doing the same. Yeah, this dot cache dot size. I hope this will work. Uh, I'll just run it and see. Yeah, it's totally working. Uh, you can you can just try to submit it as well. I hope the solution is clear to you. If you have any doubts, just drop them in the comment. I would also like to invite you to my YouTube channel. Simply doing the same. Yeah, this dot cache dot size. I hope this will work. Uh, I'll just run it and see. Yeah, it's totally working. Uh, you can you can just try to submit it as well. I hope the solution is clear to you. If you have any doubts, just drop them in the comment. Now I would like you to invite to my YouTube channel where I will be posting a lot of such videos. Uh, you will notice that uh, you, we already have a variety of lead code videos. I will be posting system design and other front end stuff as well. So if you are interested in then please hit the subscribe button. See you later. Thank you.